In this video, we are going to have the definition of in homomorphism kernel and few examples. First, we have the definition of a homomorphism. A mapping phi from a ring R to a ring R prime is a homomorphism if for every A B in R, phi of A plus B is phi of A plus phi of B, phi of A B is phi of A into phi of B. One is with regard to addition, the other one is with respect to multiplication because these are the operations in a ring R, two operations, so two conditions. Next, we have the definition of kernel. If phi from R to R prime is a homomorphism, only then we can talk about the kernel. So, kernel phi is denoted in this case as I of phi as all those elements in the domain R which are mapped down to the zero element of the O domain, or you can also call it as identity element of the O domain. So, it is set of all A in R such that phi of A is zero prime. Now, the first lemma gives us the uh, properties of um, uh, ring homomorphism. It takes the zero element of the domain, which is also called additive identity of the domain, to the additive identity of the codomain or the zero element of the codomain. And the second one is uh, the image of inverse of an element is the inverse of image of the same element. Now, to prove the first one, we consider phi of 0, um, which is uh, rewritten as phi of 0 plus 0, because phi is so homomorphism, you can uh, write this as phi of 0 plus phi of 0. So, whenever you have uh, phi of, I mean, um, in the case of group, you know that a plus b equals a means whatever here you have should be the uh, additive identity. So, here you have phi of 0 plus phi of 0 to be phi of 0. So, whatever here I have should be the additive identity of the codomain. Why codomain? Because all these elements are present only in the codomain. So, phi of 0 is 0 prime. Um, now, uh, for the second part, we make use of the first one. Uh, so, since phi of 0 is 0 prime, uh, we can uh, write the 0 as a plus of minus a, that is a and uh, minus a, they could cancel and giving you 0, the additive identity. So, if you consider any a in R, you can always write your uh, 0 in this way. Now, because phi is a homomorphism, you have uh, this step. And um, so, from here, we have phi of minus a, that is, you are applying uh, the uh, inverse of this on both sides. So, uh, that is why you get this phi of minus a is minus phi of a. So, these are the two properties. Uh, ring homomorphism takes, even in the case of group, we said that it takes identity element to the identity element and the inverse, what is present inside will come out. So, these two are um, two properties processed by uh, homomorphism. Um, in the next lemma, we prove that if phi from R to R prime is a homomorphism, then kernel phi is a subgroup under addition. And uh, this I of phi is kernel phi. And for uh, R in R, that is an element R in R, and U being a member of kernel phi, and that's I of phi, we are going to prove that R U as well as U R belongs to kernel phi. Um, to prove that kernel phi is a um, um, subgroup, first of all, um, see, uh, whenever um, any uh, question is asked uh, regarding, uh, say, uh, center of G is uh, subgroup or uh, kernel of phi is uh, normal subgroup or whatever it is, you have to first describe uh, whenever a subcollection is given, you are asked to prove that it is a um, a subgroup or um, normal subgroup or uh, ideal in the case of ring which we are going to have in the next section. You have to describe that uh, collection. So, kernel phi is all those elements uh, from the definition, all those elements in the domain which are mapped down to the additive identity of the codomain. So, phi of Z, uh, A is 0 prime. So, that description should be written first and then only you have to go for saying that it is non-empty. So, whatever sub-collection you are supposed to describe that, establish that it is non-empty and then check the criterion. 
So this uh, D and C should not be forgotten. Now since uh, phi is a homomorphism, so uh, we have described this. So we have described this, then we are going to show that it is non-empty. So for that uh, we notice this, since phi is a homomorphism, it takes uh, additive identity to additive identity. So we have this. And whenever we have phi of, uh, the, that is the image of any element and phi is 0 prime means this element should be present only in the kernel. So that is the description of kernel phi. So we have obviously 0 belonging to i of phi, therefore i of phi is non empty, that is kernel phi is non empty. This kernel phi is only taken as i of phi. So next uh, we prove the criterion. So we described it, we have shown that it is non-empty, then to uh, uh, we are going to check the criterion. First uh, for subgroup, non-empty we have shown um, for any two elements a, b and kernel phi, we have to show that uh, closure and inverse. So both combined together we can also prove this a minus b belongs to i of phi. So you consider phi of a minus b, which you can write as it is actually plus of minus b. So under addition, we have the split uh, because phi is a homomorphism, and uh, by the property you have this minus coming out. So phi of a minus phi of b. Now you have taken your a and b in i of phi, so phi of a should be zero prime. That's by the description of our i of phi and phi of b is also 0 prime. So that when um, substituted here gives us 0 prime. So image of any element under phi is 0 prime means this element should be there in kernel. So i of phi is a subgroup of r under plus. Um, next this condition that is both r u and u r should be present in kernel phi. So this is uh, kernel phi, that is i of phi. So to prove that, we have to see what is to be established. See, any element can be in i of phi. Any element can be in i of phi, provided its image under phi is zero prime. So we would like to have our r u and u r to be present in i of phi. So that means phi of those two elements should be additive identity of the codomain. So we consider phi of r u, which is um, phi of r into phi of u, because with respect to multiplication, we have this condition as phi is a homomorphism. And your uh, u, so you consider your, um, in the statement, we are given that r is a member of capital R, and u is a member of uh, i of phi or kernel phi. So if that is the case, we are supposed to establish this. So, because u belongs to i of phi, uh, we have phi of u to be 0 prime. And phi of r into 0 prime, we know by uh, lemma that a dot 0 is 0. This we have already established. So, um, this is true in the case of uh, any ring. So, in r prime, we have used this um, property. So, phi of uh, this being 0 prime, this r u should be a member of uh, i of phi. And in the same way, phi of u r, because phi is a homomorphism, we have this step. And um, because u belongs to i of phi, by the description of i of phi, this should be 0 prime. And uh, using this, we have um, 0 into a is 0. So, this is used in case of r prime. This is in case of r. This is in the case of R prime that we have this. So phi of this is uh, zero prime means so this U R should be there in I phi. Now next we have this lemma: if phi from R to R prime is a homomorphism, then phi is and this gives the criterion for any homomorphism to be one to one. So if kernel phi is singleton zero, the same um, result we had in group homomorphism also. There we had. Uh, kernel phi to be singleton E because E is the ad, um, identity element in that group G. So here 0 is the uh, um, identity element. With regard to addition only it forms a group, not under multiplication. That's why you have this to be 0. 
Now let um, for the proof uh, we will consider phi to be 1 to 1 homomorphism that is isomorphism is considered and uh, kernel phi is singleton 0 or IFI is singleton 0 is established. So, to prove that um, IFI is singleton 0, we have to consider an arbitrary element say x in kernel phi that is IFI. Now, because uh, your x is in IFI by the description of kernel phi, phi of x should be 0 phi. And uh, by the uh, property, because phi is homomorphism, take 0 element to 0 element, this 0 prime is rewritten as this. And since phi is 1 to 1, image is equal, should imply pre image is equal. So if we get x to be 0, x being an arbitrary element, kernel phi, that is IFI, can have only 0 as its um, only element. So, IFI is singleton 0. Conversely, we shall assume that IFI to be singleton 0, we have to prove that phi is 1 to 1. So, for that, we will assume the images to be equal and establish the three images are equal. Now, from here, we have phi of x minus phi of phi to be 0 prime because phi is a homomorphism. Uh, this can be rewritten in this way. And phi of uh, the image of any element and the phi being additive identity, this element should be there in kernel. So we have this. And but uh, i of phi is assumed to be singleton 0. So x minus y can only be 0, or in other words, x equals y. Therefore, phi is 1 to 1. So this uh, phi is a homomorphism. Not I of I is a homomorphism, phi is already a homomorphism, it is one to one. So we conclude that phi is an isomorphism. Now um, we have these uh, examples uh, both for homomorphism and uh, we can uh, have uh, for kernel also. So it is the constant mapping which takes all the elements to zero prime. So that is how. Um, this phi is considered phi from r to r prime is defined this way. Then this phi is a homomorphism. So for which we have to establish with regard to addition phi of a plus b is phi of a plus phi of b and phi of a b is phi of a into phi of b. So we consider phi of a plus b by the description of the mapping any element is taken to 0 prime. So, even a plus b should be taken to 0 prime. For a, b in r, because r is a ring, a plus b should be there in r. Uh, also, because um, a and b are in r, phi of a should be 0 prime and phi of b should also be 0 prime. So, phi of uh, a plus b, which is actually 0 prime, and that is rewritten as 0 prime plus 0 prime is this 0 prime replaced by this and this one by this. Next, uh, we consider uh, even if you write the other way around, now remember our r prime is uh, an abelian group under addition. So that uh, you can have phi of b plus phi of a as phi of a plus phi of b. Right? And next, we consider phi of a b. Again, AB being a member of um, capital R by the description of phi, this element should be taken to 0 prime. So, this phi of AB, which is actually 0 prime, rewritten as 0 prime into 0 prime, this 0 prime is replaced by phi of A and this by phi of B. So, you have your phi to be a homomorphism. Now, this phi is neither 1 to 1 nor on to. Why not 1 to 1? Because uh, the element 0 prime has many pre images. Why it is not on to? Because the rest of the elements in R prime. See here, um, R prime uh, is not only 0 prime, that is, it, uh, uh, it contains more than uh, one element. Other than 0 prime, it contains more element. So that has to be mentioned. So, we have um, 0 prime has uh, many pre images, so phi is not 1 to 1, and other than 0 prime, none of the elements have pre images, so phi is not 1 to 1. Next, we have <coughs> this description 
collection of all z of r2 i mean z of root 2 which is uh, <coughs> the elements of the form m plus n into root 2 where m and n are integers now this forms a ring under addition and multiplication uh, which is defined in this way we consider two elements and from this then uh, we have that um, addition being defined in this way multiplication um, we have in this way m a then 2 times uh, uh, n b plus a n into root 2 and b m into root 2. So, this forms a ring that is not established here that can be easily proved that this is a ring. So, z of root 2 under addition and multiplication defined this way is a ring. Now, we define a mapping pi from z of root 2 to this in this way. Uh, it uh, takes uh, uh, an element to its conjugate. Then, this mapping is a homomorphism. So, again, uh, we have to show that um, with regard to addition, it satisfies this condition and similarly with respect to multiplication also. So, first we consider this. This has to be rewritten as phi of m plus a minus n plus b. Uh, here it is plus. Uh, first, it has to be rewritten in this way and then only we can apply because the mapping is defined only if it is of this form. So, as such, this element is not in this form. So, it has to be written in that form and then only apply the mapping. So, when you apply that mapping, you get m plus a minus uh, n plus b into root 2. So, this is what we get after applying the mapping and that is rewritten in this way m minus n root 2 plus a minus b root 2 because uh, when you consider is it a fruit or oh, it is a commutative ring with regard to addition. So, we can uh, rewrite in this way. Now, coming to this again this has to be rewritten as phi of we will have to multiply and collect the terms like this m a plus 2 times n b then uh, root 2 into we have uh, a n plus b n, a n plus b m. Only if it is written in this way, your phi will function, otherwise it won't function. So, this will be taken to, you have this as such, its conjugate we need to write. So, m a plus 2 n b minus root 2 into a n plus b n. So, we can have it as such and then uh, we can uh, consider phi of m plus n root 2 like this we can prove phi of m plus n root 2 is nothing but m minus n root 2 and the same way we can have um, phi of a plus b root 2 to be a minus b root 2. Then we can multiply these two so that uh, we get phi of m plus n root 2 into phi of a plus b root 2 to be m minus n root 2 into a minus b root 2. So, when we multiply what we get m into a then minus n root 2 minus b root 2. So, it is plus 2nb then a minus sign comes out. So, this with this. So, you have a n root 2 is there. Um, a n and then uh, this one and this. Minus sign we have already taken out. So, it is plus b n. So, you have that to be this one. So, you can name this as 1 and this as 2. From 1 and 2, we have this uh, phi of m plus n root 2 into a plus b root 2 to be equal to phi of m plus n root 2 into phi of a plus b root 2. 
So you have um, phi to be a homomorphism. So that is what is written here. So this is we from here you can rewrite and give or this is another way. If you are unable to do it, you can consider this separately and show that LHS equals RHS. So this is your um, uh, phi which is um, a homomorphism. Um, next we have R to be the collection of all uh, real valued continuous function defined on closed interval 0, 1. So it is um, a real valued continuous function defined on closed interval 0, 1. All those functions are collected and uh, you have that in R. Now point wise addition and point wise multiplication are defined on this ring R. And um, this is field of real, I mean uh, ring of real numbers you have here and uh, here uh, just R collection. So point wise addition and point wise multiplication f plus g of x is f of x plus g of x and f g of x is f of x into g of x. So as for multiplication is uh, concerned there are two operations that can be defined on uh, functions one is composition the other one is point wise multiplication. So here we consider point wise multiplication. Of course as for addition is concerned no other go only point wise addition. So under uh, these two operations this R under uh, R forms a ring. So that part we are not establishing. Presuming that it is a ring we now define a mapping say phi from R to the ring of uh, real numbers here as this phi of f which is equal to f of half. Now this that is the function the value of the function at half. So how this uh, define the mapping it takes any real valued continuous function defined on the closed interval as this. And when we consider this f, f is a fun continuous function. So the value of f at half. See, suppose we consider say our uh, function f of x. Um, if we consider uh, if we consider f of x to be say sine uh, x, then when we consider um, sine pi x, so when we consider f of half, it will be sine pi by two. Suppose we have f of x to be say x minus half then your f of half will be 0 and if you have f of x to be say cos pi x all these are uh, continuous functions defined on uh, closed interval uh, 0 1 in fact minus 1 to 1 itself they are defined this one and this so we have f of half to be cos pi by 2 that is 0 so uh, it is the value of this function at half is the image that is how this function phi is defined. So if this is the case we have to show that this phi is a homomorphism. So that means phi of f plus g is uh, phi of f plus phi of g we have to establish and similarly phi of f g is phi of f into phi of g. So if you consider this then um, by the description of phi you have this. So if you name this as 1 by 1 you have this. And then um, the uh, addition is defined point wise. So you have this f of half plus g of half. And uh, here um, you can have this as f plus g. I mean uh, phi of f plus g that gives phi of f plus phi of g. Phi of f is nothing but by the definition that is 1 you have phi of f to be f of half and uh, phi of g to be g of half g of half so this f of half is replaced by phi of f and this one is replaced by this and you consider this again point wise um, um, multiplication so phi of f g by the description of 1 so it is by 1 you have um, this description and point wise um, point wise addition uh, multiplication point wise multiplication you have this step 
and uh, f of half is nothing but your phi of f and g of half is nothing but phi of g. So phi of f g is phi of f into phi of g. So kernel is, um, I mean, uh, pi is uh, homomorphism. So uh, we have this uh, phi to be a homomorphism. Phi is in one, uh, not one to one, but on two. Right, uh, all the uh, elements do not have a unique pre-image or you can even say that kernel phi is not simultan zero. See, uh, to prove that um, it is not one to one, we consider the kernel because it's a home of them. We can talk about the kernel. So, kernel by the definition is all those elements in the domain which are mapped onto the additive identity of the codomain, which is zero. So, this means all those f in r for which uh, f of half is zero. All these functions, all those functions which vanish at half, the meaning of this is all those functions, real valued continuous functions which vanish at half. So, this collection will have, uh, for example, x minus half, it will come because it will vanish at half or even cos pi x, it will also vanish at the half. So, all these functions uh, will be uh, even x minus half, the whole square you can have. So, all those functions will vanish at half. So, it is not singleton zero. Even uh, if, if this uh, zero is a constant function uh, from u half plus zero, I mean, um, closed interval zero, one, two, r, that is defined as all the elements in this interval will be taken to zero element of this. That is the property of zero function. It will take any element to value zero. Whatever may be your x in closed interval zero, one, this is this. So, it is other than zero, this zero function, other than zero function, it contains all other functions. Zero is present and dot of But other than that, it has more elements. So, you cannot have uh, kernel phi to be just singleton zero, and therefore it cannot be one to one by the uh, one of the above lemmas property, that uh, criterion rather. Now to prove that phi is on to, you consider any alpha in R. We can definitely find uh, one f in R, uh, in particular a constant function, which takes uh, uh, half to uh, you have zero you have this constant function. See, like a zero function that we have. So, in that case, you take alpha to be a function as well as element. So, which takes uh, any element to the value alpha. So, in that way, some constant function we can always have. It takes this to uh, any x to alpha. This is value alpha. So, that means we definitely have one constant function. Just to have uh, a direct uh, connection, this, um, this notation is chosen. So, we can always have one constant function. You can describe a function, uh, say small f, which takes f of x to alpha. So, this function will act as uh, uh, the required uh, pre-image. That's a con continuous function. So, phi of f is equal to f of half is equal to half, um, and therefore, you have your phi to be on to. Next, uh, we have this uh, even identity mapping. See, when we consider identity mapping from uh, any ring, from any ring R to itself, if uh, we consider identity mapping, R to itself, which takes uh, any element to itself for every x and r. Then this identity function is also a yeah, homomorphism. This is another example. Uh, next, we have this um, phi from z under plus. We know that uh, the ring of integers, I mean, um, the integers, collection of all integers forms a ring under addition, usual addition and multiplication of uh, integers. And this is our um, Zn as collection of all congruence classes modulo n. Zn as class 0 to class n minus 1. 
so we have this um, you can uh, we even have the description as phi of phi any integer or phi of j being taken to class j where your j here this j belongs to uh, is that whereas congruence class uh, your uh, this one will uh, be element from class 0 to class n minus 1 suppose you fix uh, n to be say 10 and you consider um, is it 12 i mean um, in is it uh, the element 12 then what will be the image of uh, this 12 under this phi description it is nothing but uh, the class 12 but in is a 10 because the codomine you have uh, is a 10 so which forms a group i mean which forms a ring is a 10 forms a ring under addition modulo 10 multiplication modulo 10 so this will be same as class 2 so from 0 to uh, 9 only we have but if you have 12 means it is the reminder when you divide uh, 12 by 10 so a reminder of a on division by n so we have the description in this way it is the reminder of a on division by n so um, when you divide a by n um, you can um, by uh, euclidean algorithm you know that given a and then you can find two more integers q1 and r1 such that a is written as q1n plus r1 and similarly if you consider any other element say b then uh, you can have like this so this is the meaning of saying that uh, phi of a is the reminder of a on division by n now to prove that uh, phi is a homomorphism we consider uh, two elements say a and b in uh, z and uh, as we need to consider the reminder of a on division by n we can write by Euclidean algorithm as said earlier uh, a being rewritten in this way b being rewritten in this way we see that phi of a to be r1 phi of b to be r2 now a plus b when we consider we will have to add these two so this is what we get now this is q1n plus uh, q no, sorry q1 plus q2 into n plus r1 plus r2 now, if you have R1 plus R2 to be less than N, then you leave this as such so that uh, phi of A plus B will be R1 plus R2. Suppose we have this case, R1 plus R2 to be greater than or equal to N. Then in that case, you will write this R3 where R3 is the reminder when you divide R1 plus R2 by N. So, in that case, phi of A plus B will be R3. So, phi of A addition modulo n phi of B will be uh, just this one R1 addition modulo n R2 if this is the case. But R3 is the reminder means then you get this. So, because we have assumed already you know that um, there are two cases. This is case 1. Case 1 will have may have your R1 plus R2 to be less than n. But in case 2, it may be greater than or equal to n. If it is greater than or equal to n, then you will have to divide that by n and uh, take the reminder. So, that we denote as uh, R3. So, this when you do uh, addition modulo n, you are taking this as such. If you have R1 plus R2 as such, when you have R1 plus R2 to be less than n. But it is uh, a reminder R3 when R1 plus R2 is greater than or equal to N. So, two cases are discussed. So, um, when you consider phi of uh, A plus B, it will be just R1 plus R2 and that is nothing but phi of A plus phi of B. So, this is the case when R1 plus R2 is less than N. Otherwise, you have that to be R3 and that is nothing but uh, by this description R3. And so, in both the cases, we have this to be true. The same case holds here also. When we consider A into B, when we multiply these two, this A and B, you have Q1, Q2, N square. Then term containing uh, N, 
so R1 Q2N and R2 Q1N and then R1 R2. So this is what we have. And again, uh, the two cases need to be discussed. If you have this to be less than n, leave as such. Otherwise, uh, R3 is a reminder when uh, you divide um, um, this uh, the product by n. Then you have this to be greater than n. We'll have to take the reminder. So as we had in the previous case, we can have pi of a b to be equal to pi of a into pi of b. So uh, these are the examples for homomorphism and uh, uh, kernel in this case uh, you have kernel to be you have kernel to be all those elements which are mapped on to kernel phi is all those elements in the domain which are mapped on to the additive identity namely class 0. So it is set of all x such that pi of x when you this is class x actually class 0 set of all x such that all multiples of n. So it is just k. All these will be so definitely it is not uh, singleton uh, 0. So it is not um, it is not, uh, see, it is, see, 0 is also taken, 0 is taken to class 0 and n will be taken to class 0. Even if you consider 2n, that will be taken to class 0. Uh, that means class 0 will have more than one free image. So, you cannot have this to be a um, one to one map. But it is uh, on to. When all the elements will have free image. So, um, these are the examples of homomorphism um, as with uh, Khan. Thank you.